I am Morten Frisch, uh, doctor in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, I have been conducting a study on, on the sexual consequences of male circumcision in Danish men and in their partners. What prompted me was uh, the, the lack of uh, scientific evidence uh, linking uh, uh, sexual behaviors, uh, sexual satisfaction, sexual functioning to the foreskin status of the penis, which was surprising to me, uh, giving the very natural th idea that uh, it could affect sexual functioning. And um, after having considered for a while how to do this, I contacted uh, colleagues in Copenhagen who conduct a survey every f around four or five years uh, and asked them please to, to include a question about uh, circumcision status of uh, the man himself and for the women also a question about the circumcision status of their spouse. And uh, they were willing to do that and also included a number of questions of, uh, about sexual behavior and sexual uh, troubles of various kinds. What did your study find? Uh, it's important to stress here that most, sex, or most circumcised men and most women with circumcised spouses do not encounter a whole lot of sexual trouble. That I want to stress to avoid stigmatization. But also, uh, when that's having said that, it's important to notice that there were differences between the circumcised men and uh, the uncircumcised men, in that the circumcised men reported orgasm difficulties much more frequently than uh, the uh, uncircumcised men. And more strikingly, and probably also more surprisingly to, to, to most, uh, women with circumcised spouses reported considerably more sexual trouble and considerably less sexual needs fulfillment that, than uh, women with uncircumcised spouses. For, for the women as for the men, they, they reported orgasm difficulties, difficulties reaching orgasm or even inability to reach orgasm uh, two and a half times more often than women with uncircumcised spouses and they reported uh, painful intercourse much more often than, uh, than women with uh, uncircumcised spouses. One particularly interesting feature about this study was that it came out only after considerable struggle of getting it out. Um, prior to this study, um, I and my colleagues had uh, published uh, three uh, papers on various aspects of sexual dysfunctions and trouble, sexual trouble in Denmark, uh, looking at the socioeconomic correlates of uh, sexual dysfunctions and the health correlates of sexual dysfunction and also the lifestyle factors influencing sexual dysfunction. And all these papers had, had absolutely no difficulty in getting out. Um, and they were published in the uh, two most prominent uh, sexual medicine journals. Uh, all, uh, all three papers came out in U.S. journals. Um, but the fourth paper here, including one more variable, namely circumcision, had all the, kind, all the troubles that you could imagine. I, I, I did expect it, but I didn't expect it to be so... Um, so harsh the criticism, the, 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 uh, the, the way this uh, paper was judged by in the review process was absolutely uh, without pre precedent for me. I never ever had a, a scientific review that was so vicious and so uh, indecent and uh, accus accusing of uh, racism and dishonesty and all sorts of things were told to us that um, in order to have the editors reject the paper. It was a kind of obstruction, simply to get to avoid this paper from coming out. Usually in a scientific review process, you are getting in a, you're getting responses back from from uh, qualified uh, colleagues around the world who know know about the topic of of, uh, of, of relevance here, and and uh, usually get a few hundred words of comments uh, to, uh, and uh, constructive criticisms uh, so as to make your study better and your publication even stronger. But what I faced here was a completely uh, extreme uh, review. Uh, you should remember that the paper here uh, that came out was 
a full 15 pages long article in a scientific journal it's pretty dull and long and heavy to come through so I don't uh, I don't want anybody to to read it unless they're very interested um, but 15 pages but in this review that came back to, to me after the first round of review the reviewer had actually uh, so many comments that it took up the space of two and a half times that amount of space that I had used in my own paper, which is completely uh, unusual and it really shows a very strong and uh, emotional uh, setup of the reviewers. So, so, so this had to be stopped, and all thinkable uh, arguments were used to to pull our study apart, even though it had previously been uh, published or the same data had been used for three previous publications with uh, no serious comments whatsoever. But adding circumcision to the variable list made the whole difference and everything was worthless, according to this uh, reviewer. So that's a study in how sensitive things can be in science. And uh, that really that's still uh, a subject of great surprise to me that that you can be so one-eyed that you under the under uh, pretending that you put up an, a scientific view on things that you are, all you're doing is promoting your political agenda uh, sexual health and sexual uh, trouble uh, is one of my research interests and I really want to pursue uh, further research in this area. There is, however, one major limitation here and that is uh, funding opportunities for, for re research in these matters uh, are extremely limited. I have had uh, no great trouble in getting support for my cancer, my autoimmune disease research over the years. However, uh, getting support for things that have to do with, um, with sexual health is extremely difficult. Even in a country like mine, which is relatively relaxed in sexual matters, it's just, it's just, not, uh, just not easy to convince any funding body that this is worthwhile doing. So I would like to have a, a couple of PhD students uh, to, to carry out uh, further research on this and uh, supervise them on that. My time limits really are uh, uh, doesn't do not permit me to be as productive as I would ideally like to be in this area, and I would. But but I yes I will continue, but at a pace that is technically possible and, and as e economically possible, because I all the studies that have come out so far on this have been without funding. It's a Conamore kind of project, and why is that so important? I cannot uh, say anything, but it's important because uh, human sexuality is part, essential part of our lives.